Not everybody hates QE2. Many economists agree the Fed should be buying treasuries, and some even wish Ben Bernanke would put his pistol away and bring out a howitzer. Guy Lebas is one. He is the chief fixed income strategist to Jenny Montgomery Scott and a Bloomberg Best on Treasury market forecasting. Guy is live from Philadelphia this morning. Guy, $600 billion is what the Treasury, uh, excuse me, is what the Fed is throwing at the Treasury market. You think it ought to be something in the order of $1.3 trillion. Why is that? Well, here's exactly why. The money supply, when you include the decline in bank lending from the end of 2007 to about today, has declined by a little bit more than $900 billion. So when you take the Fed sort of replacing that decline in the money supply and add a 2% inflation rate on top of that, well, that's how we get to the $1.3 trillion. It's simple. The money supply needs to expand at a faster rate than it is today in order to generate that sort of 2% inflation target the Fed's looking for. Is that to say, Guy, that you think QE2 in its current form will be ineffective? Well, no, it's certainly a great program in order to stop long-term risks or at least reduce the long-term risks of a deflationary spiral. We just expect what QE2 is going to be, end up being is a more extended program. So the $75 billion a month the Treasury buys currently scheduled to end in June, we feel it's more likely to be extended probably through year-end 2011. Uh, Guy, though, how can we say that QE2 is working if Treasury yields have backed up from 2.4% in mid-October to 3% pretty much this morning. Well, we can't say for sure right away. That's one of the problems with the program that the Fed institutes, even one of this size, is that it takes at a minimum six months before we start seeing any meaningful results. In addition, we're not necessarily going to see the results directly in yields. We're going to see them in some of the inflationary economic data and also in terms of inflation expectations, which is a key point. And since the Fed's first started talking about QE2 really in early October or so, inflation expectations have risen a little bit, which is moving in the right direction for their desires, at least. Guy, let's talk for a moment about this whole uh, issue or question argument about a bond bubble. Are we in a bond bubble with the, Treasury, with the Fed rather buying so many Treasury bonds? Well, not to get too alliterative here, but uh, we tend to believe the bond bubble is bogus, and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, number one, a bubble requires that investors are purchasing an asset in the hopes that down the road it'll be worth more and they can flip it. It's what we call a speculative bubble. And our experience within the bond markets, even over the last year, is that investors are increasingly putting their cash into debt for the returns, for the income, not for that sort of speculative bet. It's point one. Point two, the bond market is humongous, about three times the size of the U.S. stock market, give or take. And the inflows from individual investors over the last year, they've only represented about 2% of the entire U.S. bond market. So the inflows haven't been big enough to cause that type of bubble that many people are concerned about. I have to challenge you on one point. Is speculation a prerequisite for a bubble? Not everybody who is participating in the housing market which we all would acknowledge, I think, was a bubble, was, was in there for speculative purposes. Sure, absolutely. You're never going to see everybody in a market for one particular reason. But I think when we're talking about the bond markets in particular, or the stock markets, financial assets, speculation, at least on the margin, has to be a major cause of a bubble. And we're just not seeing that, frankly, within the debt markets. Well, we'll all continue to pay attention. And Guy, I know we'll have you back here on the inside track. We thank Guy LeBob, Bloomberg Best from Jenny Montgomery Scott.